I am Brian and this is Wrench Fest Garage. Today we're going to be doing some trailer ramps on this trailer. So hang out, watch us make some mistakes and enjoy. So a little history on this trailer, it's just basically a car hauling trailer. I've had it for maybe six, eight months, something like that. So far it's been a great trailer, no problems, but I absolutely hate the ramps that it came with. When I say I hate them, they're really nice ramps, but, well, let me show you. This is the ramps here. So they're just kind of heavy and you got to pack them from here to the back of the trailer. And it's basically just a pain and it's heavy. I'm going to still use these ramps because I can side load like four wheelers and stuff. I can just hang them off here and they're going to be great for that. But we're going to make some flip down ramps on the back that will just be a lot easier and more useful to use. That's what we're doing. Alright so I'm going to make the ramps about five feet long and that's about how they come out. The uh, ramps that the trailer came with are actually six feet long and that's about how those were. Anyway I don't I think that's a little bit overkill. We're mostly loading jeeps and stuff like that. Another thing we're going to have to do this is where the old ramps mounted on so we're probably going to cut this all this off go to our own mounting systems where'd you get this nice table uh, i actually borrowed this from my brother several years ago and when he watches this video he'll probably come and get it but yeah it's been a handy table it's a little rough but man it works great so this is my brand new saw. I've been meaning to buy one of these for several years and the other day was the day. So I finally pulled the trigger on one. Should make kind of short work cutting this metal up. We'll see how it goes. So this is my wood cutting setup. Basically I got this table and that stand over there. I use it for finish work, stuff like that on the rare occasions that I do such things. Hopefully it'll work for the metal today. We'll give her a go. I'm just gonna hurry and square this up. With these saws, it's kind of hard to tell where zero is. There's marks and stuff. We're going to be doing a lot of cutting today, so we'll hurry and square these up. Hopefully some of the cuts will be kind of square. So you may have noticed that we're back out in the driveway again today. The channel's called Wrench Fest Garage, but pretty sure we should have named it Wrench Fest Driveway because I think we spent more time out here working on the driveway than we actually have in the garage. But that's the way she goes. It's a beautiful day, which it's been a long cold winter, but here we are out in the sunlight enjoying it. So this is going to be the first cut on my new saw. The way I usually do these, I usually put the metal in and so these are going to be a foot wide. These are going to be the pieces that go in between the ramps. So I just measure from the blade up to the outside of the material and it's 12 inches and so that's what we're going to go with. <laughs> Ain't that one. How many GFIs are in here? I think there should be three. Let's see. I can't remember where it goes, where it comes from, but yeah, it's on that same circuit as those are. I might have to go see if it tripped the breaker. I can't remember. I honestly can't remember how I did this. So I thought these went around that way. Is there one out back? And I thought these went this way. Well, let's walk out back and see if I got a GFI out there. I just don't remember. This might be off the porch. I don't know. Nope. Nope. There's one. I think that was it. I guess we gotta check. Let's go check the circuit breakers. See, it's tripped. Let's see. I think it's this one. So that might be out on the front porch. It says it's good. All right, I don't know. Your fives are good, but I still don't have any power to those. Uh, I ain't getting no power to that. Okay, one more. Check one more thing. Okay, it's this one. Okay, I tripped the breaker. I guess I gotta set that GFI again. 
There we go. Jeez, what a pain. This is a tube by tube by 3 16 square tubing. And this stuff here is two by two by three sixteenths angle iron. So that's the gist of what we're building it out of. We got kind of all of our pieces cut to make the at least one ramp. So we're gonna set it up here. Um, I want to try to make a jig because these are gonna sit kind of like this like about a half inch up so when you're going up the ramp you got a little bit of traction i gotta clean these up just a little bit clean these edges up with the grinder real quick and we'll try to set this up square it up go from there start welding it together Got the trusty dusty framing square out here to square up our metal, but uh, this should work. It'll be fine. All right, so what I'm gonna try to do now is build a jig because I want these angle piece of angle iron to stick up just a little bit, like about a half inch up above the square tubing so you get better traction. If you drop them down in here like this, then sometimes the vehicles can spin on this smooth square tubing and we don't want that. So we're gonna try to make a jig and get these all to set up about half inch and just weld them in. You know what you're doing? Not a clue. I had it all in my brain figured out now. We're gonna go seven and a half inches uh, between each one, so that should be pretty decent where the tires won't fall down in between them. I don't know if y'all have drug a car up on a trailer, but if these are spread too far apart, the tires fall kind of in between them, and then you gotta really pull hard, and then on to the next one, and it's a battle. So the closer you can get these together, the better off, the easier it's gonna be to load a car. We're going with seven and a half. It kind of works out, I guess, kind of evenly. Or it won't. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, we're going to start tacking these in and, and then go to welding. I can't do simple math, so I'm going to have Erica help me with the math here. But uh, here we go, I'm trying to figure it out. So 15 plus 7 and a half, Erica. 22 and a half. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 22 6, 22 points out, you're right. Okay, 22 and a half plus 7. No, 7 and a half. So. 30. You sure? Yeah. Okay, so it'll be 37 and a half. Yep. And then. And then what? 45. And then what? 52 and a half. And then what? 60, right? Yep. Okay. All right, so I need to squeeze these two pieces together just a little bit, make it nice and tight. I'm just going to use a ratchet strap to do just that. This is actually the ratchet strap I used to hold my door shut on the old crew cab. And Erica judges me about that all the time. What are you doing? Is your door? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty nice. That's nice, isn't it? Well, everybody has that feature. The door's gonna fall off now. The door's gonna fall off. <laughs> okay, I need you to hold this kind of right here. And the ratchet strap. Okay, that's beautiful. I got that song stuck in my head. Campfire song song? I call this one the campfire song song. So what I'm trying to do here is just have between three eighths and a half sticking up here. There's got to be way easier ways to do this. I don't know what those ways are. That's cool stuff. Okay. Better put that strap back on your door before they fall on the floor. <laughs> don't worry, I'll lose them.
So I got it all tacked together. Now I'm gonna just go and finish weld it and then I need to put these end brackets on and this one will be done. So I had these brackets made up from a local fabricator and the reason I did that was just time. A guy can cut these out with a torch or grinder or whatever and they would look just fine. But it's these holes that consumes all the time and if you drill these out with like a hole saw or something it takes forever as I'm sure some of you know. This is either 3 8 or 5 16 I think it's 3 8 so and I've got 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I got 12 brackets so you'd have to drill 12 1 inch plus holes and you know the guy didn't charge me very much for it and it was just the way to go so anyway this is the bracket this side will go on the trailer this side will go on the ramps and then we'll have some one inch run round bar that goes through those holes right there and uh, that's how we're going to attach it all it'll be the hinge here we go freaking wind is killing me So the wind was getting the better of us. If anybody's ever MIG weld, they know that it blows gas away and it makes for a crappy weld. The wind was picking up there and it was getting a little hard to weld. So we just moved into the garage out of the wind. So here we go. So we got this side done. Um, I won't bore you with the other side because it's going to be exactly the same. But we got it all welded up. It looks pretty good. I think it'll be fine. Uh, we're going to move on to the trailer side of it. Attach the hinges so we can hook this up. Make sure everything's going to work like it is in my brain. So we got to go ahead and pull the lights out of this because we're going to be doing some grinding and welding. I don't want to melt the lights or the wiring. So we're going to go ahead and pull them out. I got to cut these brackets off so we can make room for the new brackets. That doesn't want to come out of there. There it comes. Break that light. Okay, come on out of there, light. I know there's an easier way to do this, but I'm gonna do it the hard way, because that's how I am. Probably break a few things. All right, we got her. There's a lot of wiring in there. Okay, those don't just unplug. That one came out a little easier. Fortunately, these are wired directly in. I don't have any thing I can just disconnect. And we got wires going to the little lights. This sucks. What I'm afraid of here, if I leave these in, I'm gonna melt the wires. Let's see if we can pull these out, pull them back through. Only thing is, is I gotta get them out. Probably the thing to do is to hook a wire or something up to these so when I pull them back through I can pull them back the other way. I'm just going to pull these lights out. Um, I was going to hook a wire to them but I can't find what I want right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull them out. I don't think it's going to be too big of a deal to run some wire from here to here and be able to fish these lights back through. Either way it's going to be a pain. That's a little trash. That's not that good. Will. All right, so we got the brackets cut off. Now I got to clean off the old welds. And then we're going to figure out where the new brackets are going to go for the ramps and go ahead and weld them on. Okay, so we moved the trailer over close to the welder and we're going to go ahead and figure out where these brackets go and get them welded on. Alright, so I put a chunk of metal in there to try to keep the heat off these wires so I don't want these wires to melt, be welding right here. Hopefully that protects it just a little bit. Okay, close your eyes. They're closed.
so we can cut a piece of round bar uh, and that's what's going to attach the trailer to the ramps and kind of make a hinge. We'll put a couple of pins or holes and pins on each hand. So if you ever want to completely remove the ramps, you can just remove a pin, slide it out, and you can pull the ramps off. It'll be pretty slick. Slide it through. Okay, so okay, we got the brackets welded on with the hinge. Everything looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. So now what we need to do is figure out how to hang the ramps up when we're driving. So basically, what I'm going to do is run a piece of bar, well, it'll be two inch, flat strap, quarter inch, something like that. That'll go from here to here, and I'll have a couple of round bar, pieces of round bar, here and here, so I can pin it on both ends. I might lean it back just a little bit, something like that. Son of a bitch. You want to go reset that breaker? Half inch on each side. I can clearly see that's going to take six months. from perfect but that'll do okay so what we're doing now is we're putting legs on the bottom of the ramp so when you go up the ramp it doesn't squat the trailer or try to teeter totter the trailer so we're going to hurry and cut those out, weld them on, and the side will be done. Okay, I guess that's how we're gonna get done today. It's getting dark out, but we did get this side completely done. It's all welded up, all ready to go. Um, I won't bore you with the other side because it's exactly gonna be the same as this side. So we're gonna get it all painted up, looking nice, get the other side done, and then we'll show you the results. Got my other ramp built. We're gonna clean them up real quick and throw some paint on them, and then they should be good to go. So we got the ramps all painted at the paint booth. We got all these brackets welded on. Now we're just gonna shoot a little rattle can primer on them and uh, call that good enough for the trailer, his trailer ramps. I mean, it'll be fine.
Yeah. Oh, this one's this one's blinking. This one is not. Okay, that one may be wired to this one. It may come down this way and go over this way. Yeah, because this red wire's unhooked. Here. Oh, it's not so plugged in. It's not plugged in. So we probably need to rewire this before we get wire. So basically we got power coming down this side of the trailer and then it's supposed to loop over to that side of the trailer. I think, I hope. What have I done? Made a giant mess. Should have maybe paid some attention. Is there, yeah, we're gonna have to ground this as we're going. But before we do that, we gotta paint it. So let's do that. Let's try to flip these over so they don't get paint on them. So the reason we're getting this trailer done, well, kind of in a hurry, because we're gonna haul the Jeep to Moab next weekend. So hopefully the lights work, hopefully the ramps work. And as usual, we're cutting her a little close, but one way or the other, we're going. I don't even care. It's happening. All right, so now I gotta figure out how to put all this back together. I wasn't paying much attention when I pulled it apart, but uh, I think it's pretty pretty simple. We'll figure it out. Eventually or we'll blow a bunch of fuses or burn it down. We'll see. Probably burn it down. I believe white is ground. Black goes to green and red goes to whatever. Oh, pink's still wet. In other words, I think the green and the white run back up this way and run all the clearance lights. So everything runs down. That side of the trailer comes over and goes back that way. All right, this is so simple. So the wires come down this way and then join up with these wires in the middle and then it daisy chains and goes for the rest of the trailer. So we got to get these to the center. All right, so I'm going to try to use this tie wire to run it through here. I'm going to hook the wires to this tie wire and then pull it back through this little hole here for the little clearance lights. Okay, we're through. Okay, so we need to loop and then loop and then loop. Okay, your wire is ran through, back through. Now we just gotta hook everything together. Ta -ta! <laughs> They're angry. That was pretty embarrassing. <laughs> Fall out. You come here. You come here. Does it appear that I know what I'm doing? Because I. No. I'm a little confused. Especially when you cod back at the birds. I'm trying to wrap my brain around this and for some reason I can't today. Alright, moment of truth. Moment of... I'm scared, kind of thing. They're on! Take that. Take that as a win. Hey, don't tell mom I stole their hand soap. The trailer will smell nice and nice and soapy. Nice and soapy. What is it called? This is the pink sparkling spritz. Pink That's sparkling the good spritz. stuff. From Bath and Body Works. I don't know. It smells good and it's slick. I mean, what more do you need?
Lights pop right in. Do you want to run the bar or do you want to run the ramp? Got the ramps done. I'm pretty happy with the way they turned out. They should last a long time. If you like this video, tune into the next one. Like, comment, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.